Well, it's uh, seven o'clock. So um, I'd like to uh, well welcome all of you tonight um, or this evening, because it's not that late yet. Um, so uh, together with uh, Gabrielle, I'll be your host for today. And today we're going to listen to a presentation um, about the uh, Bundesverband Dunkelbine in Deutschland, which is, um, let's say, the German Association for Preserving the Local Endemic uh, Mellifera Honeybee. And our presenter for tonight will be uh, Stefan Knot, um, who is the representative for this association in the Sikkim uh, Regional Board. Um, and aside that, we have uh, Johannes Peter, who is the um, uh, Zuchchef, so uh, breeding coordinator for the association. And also uh, welcome to Sarah Wiener. Um, she's like the uh, patroness of the association. And uh, well, I'll uh, let Stefan introduce her later on. So uh, I'd say, Stefan, um, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So can everybody see my screen? No. No, not yet. So what? So what is the frequent problems with presentations? So. Do you have it open? Yes, I have it open. Can you do screen share at the oh, bottom. Some. Can you open the screen share? Moment, my I cannot open the um, so. So this. So it's the, the one thing which we not tested. <laughs> yes, but I have it in any case. Try to figure it out. So perhaps. Uh, well, you have the allowance to use the screen share. But I, I do not uh, see my, my Zoom window. That's the problem. Oh, you don't see it. Oh, do you have it no. in the application or in the browser? So moment, I have, I, I have the Zoom screen, so, and now Bildschirm freigeben, so. Okay, we get it. Okay, better now? Much better. Much better. Perfect. It works. <laughs> so, then I can remove the, so. It's always a challenge, every time, so. Okay. So, jetzt, do you see uh, my full screen? Das sieht gut aus, ja. Okay, fine. Okay, um, hi everyone. My name is uh, Stefan Knot. I am a member of the Board of Representatives for the Bundesverband Dunkelbiene Deutschland. Um, Dylan uh, already gave you a, a translation what this is yeah I, I give it you again uh, as close as possible to the original it's something like the federal association dark bee germany this uh, ev at the end um, means um that is um uh, association is um, registered by the competent authorities so it's something official now so my uh, the, or the topic of my talk today is uh, uh, to give you an overview of the activities towards re-establishing um, dark bees in Germany. So uh, perhaps some words um, uh, about myself. I'm a beekeeper for more than 20 years now. Um, roughly 10 years ago, I started with the dark European bee. Um, to be honest, I do not exactly know when, I, I don't remember this, but nevertheless, it's 
sh uh, should be um, approximately 10 years. Um, the Bundesverband uh, Dunkle Biene uh, was founded in uh, 2019 as an extension of its 400 uh, Dunkle Biene Sachsen. Uh, Dunkle Biene Sachsen was intended to be a, a local um, association for um, Melifera uh, breeders, but it uh, has grown rapidly and acquired members um, uh, all over Germany, uh, so that um, in consequence, uh, it uh, was close uh, to uh, develop it into an um, um, association uh, for which covers um, entire Germany. So, yeah, two years old now. Uh, Dunkle Biene Deutschland is the greatest organization for the protection of um, dark uh, European bee in Germany. We now have uh, roughly uh, 350 uh, members, mainly in Germany, but also in um, Austria, Switzerland, and Czechia. And we are also a parent organization, um, uh, uh, which means that not only um, uh, uh, natural persons can be member, but also uh, entire uh, uh, smaller associations um, or uh, initiatives uh, which are uh, or which work on the protection of the dark bee. So let's come to Sarah and have a look on the right hand side of this, or uh, have a look on the pick. Uh, you uh, probably guess that Sarah is this girl on the right, on the very right side. And by the way, this guy on the left side is me. Uh, when we donated a uh, hive of dark European bee to Sarah in spring of this year. Uh, we are very uh, happy that we won her uh, to be our patroness. Um, she is uh, in Germany well known as a TV cook, but uh, she is much more. She is a successful businesswoman, book author, and uh, she runs her own um, ecological agriculture. She is a passionate beekeeper and since 2019 a member of the European Parliament. Uh, at the um, uh, when I have finished this talk, then uh, Sarah will introduce herself uh, uh, more in deep and she will uh, tell you, of course, much uh, more than I can hear right now. So let's come uh, to the history and current situation in Germany. To make it short, um, Melifera was extincted. Um, Germany, uh, as you can see here, is um, uh, quite in the center uh, of the natural distribution area of the Melifera bee. Um, at least uh, 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 regarded from a, a Western or Mid-European point of view. I will come, uh, I have uh, um, two more graphics for you in the following slides. I will rel relativize it a bit then, uh, but um, I will come back to this um, uh, situation that we are, uh, are quite in the center uh, later on in this talk. Um, we have um, no stable self-sustaining wild populations of bees for a long time, probably centuries. Um, the exact time of vanishing, uh, nobody knows, uh, but it is uh, most probably uh, because of the dense human settlement and um, intensive uh, usage of uh, forests and uh, natural resources. Then um, since uh, roughly 1850, um, there was increased importation of other uh, subspecies uh, and uh, subsequent hybridization, especially uh, with uh, Ligustica bees from Italy. And nevertheless, um, uh, Inoch Zander uh, tried to organize 
uh, breeding of, of mellifera, uh, beginning from 1999, uh, but um, in the, uh, around the beginning of the 60s, then in uh, Eastern as well as uh, Western Germany, it was um, decided by the officials of the, the bee breeder associations that um, breeding of uh, mellifera uh, uh, should be discontinued and uh, they switched to uh, Konica in, yeah, as well as in, in East as uh, well as in um, West Germany. But in August 1983, there was the first documented reintroduction of uh, black bees from Scandinavia done by uh, uh, yeah, a well-known um, enthusiast. And then in the uh, following years, um, occasionally um, imports followed. Um, in the, after the, the um, millennium changed, then uh, uh, more that, uh, there was more and more uh, interest uh, in dark bees. And uh, in the last 10 or 15 years, we see a small but rising number of private enthusiasts who uh, breed and reproduce uh, mellifera bees and make them available uh, for a uh, broader amount of uh, beekeepers, which uh, in turn raised um, interest uh, because it got yeah, more and more known uh, and um, uh, realized uh, uh, by the, by the uh, beekeepers. Uh, but of course, it, it's to say that uh, we are uh, that there was a still strong uh, dependence on frequent uh, importations of uh, pure breeds uh, because um, uh, we had no um, secure um, mating places. And in this way, we made a, a great efforts in the last two or three years because uh, we won several uh, protected and. Uh, uh, not protected mating places and also um, uh, artificial insemination uh, became uh, practicable for for some of us. So as a stepwise uh, reduction of uh, imports uh, is possible now. On your right uh, hand side, you see another map. Um, here you can see uh, that uh, Germany is not absolutely in the center of the uh, natural um, um, mellifera distribution because this um, um, area of uh, uh, this mellifera area indeed reaches far into uh, Russia. Uh, as uh, it's um, written in literature that it reaches until the Ural uh, Mountains. And um, I have a, a third um, a map, uh, and this, uh, you can, or what I want to show is here, the Ural Mountains are approximately here. This means um, that no, um, a lot of, uh, or actually the, the biggest part of the uh, natural uh, distribution area of the Melifera is actually situated in Russia. And um, Russia is always uh, left out, uh, if you um, see this um, maps, because uh, we always in, in uh, mid and Western um, Europe uh, are uh, used to consider Europe as this, what is actually uh, seen on, on this uh, map here. It's uh, Bit important, or it's important for us. I, I will come uh, to, uh, uh, to this um, topic at the end of my talk today. Uh, why it's uh, is important uh, for us, where uh, we can find um, mellifera bees in the world, or in let's say in Europe. So let's come uh, to uh, ongoing work and uh, give you. A short uh, outlook. Um, the, um, it, uh, it, 
currently the the um, development of a, a organized breeding is um, in progress. We are working on uh, the um, uh, on our uh, breeding uh, regulations and uh, some uh, uh, corner points I will um, uh, show you at one of on, on one of the next slides. We uh, made uh, uh, or, or we hope to make further advances in the availability of mating places. This means there are uh, chances uh, that we will win uh, even more uh, mating uh, places, also uh, official protected one. Yeah, uh, then um, again to the um, to the, this map and the, the uh, poor imported breeds we we um, still are um, yeah uh, importing. Um, we screened them uh, for their uh, performance uh, on our uh, typical uh, climatic and nutritional conditions, which make uh, which uh, made. Um, be different from them uh, uh, of the of, of their origin of these breeds, and uh, we screen everything we can get, and uh, when it works well, then we will uh, merge it with our um, already um, established uh, breeds. Um, and the idea is to keep uh, as maximum a genetic variation. Um, uh, for a future uh, vital German conservation uh, breed as possible. Um, and I, I think I should go here a bit more in deep. Uh, uh, what we um, uh, can find in Germany is uh, that we have several uh, climatic uh, uh, reg regions and uh, landscapes. For example, we have uh, Maritime uh, climate uh, uh, close to the, the coast of the Northern Sea. Then we have um, continental tendencies uh, in the Northeast uh, uh, where I live. Uh, we have a moderate climate in, in most part of Germany and we have um, alpine climate in the very South. So um, it is, we think it is, useful that we uh, test um, mellifera origins from all over its uh, natural distribution area uh, because what we can find uh, perhaps in, in England and Ireland is uh, um, bees uh, which are well uh, uh, adapted to maritime, maritime uh, climate and uh, of course uh, uh, in, in Russia um, some which are adapted to, to continental climate and uh, Switzerland and Austria uh, should have uh, uh, bees which are uh, fine with alpine climate and so on. And um, this is uh, what we are currently doing, uh, establishing our own breeds and importing bees from other uh, origins and testing and, and um, introducing them into uh, our breeds. So uh, we uh, at Dunkle Biene Deutschland agree that we want to do conservation breeding. So that's it's something different from performance breeding. The most important selection criterion is the purity, uh, as, uh, which is um, defined by uh, of caused by appearance and morphology. Um, uh, for example, uh, wing vein nation, typical behavior and uh, genetic markers. Uh, second uh, important point is vitality, but this is more on the responsibility of the particular breeder. Uh, uh, what to their vitality is um, uh, yeah, a bit uh, vague and it's, um, uh, uh, what I mean uh, uh, thereby is, uh, for example, foraging skills, um, disease resistance, and longevity, uh, which all um, typical and uh, uh, important um, um, features of, of uh, um, uh, vital uh, BR. 
So, uh, yes, most important poor breeding. We have um, since uh, 2021 uh, protected mating place at, uh, or, or called Stumpfwald in the um, uh, southwest of Germany in Baden-Württemberg. Then we uh, do uh, instrumental um, insemination in uh, uh, 2021, approximately 250 queens. We use uh, several um, uh, not registered uh, uh, top secret <laughs> mating places. And altogether, we uh, produced uh, roughly uh, 500 poor uh, bred and mated queens. Um, uh, in 2021. So, um, uh, our wishes for the future are, of course, a, a strong col collaboration with all SICAM uh, uh, member organizations and uh, the um, establishment, conservation, and stabilization of a vital uh, dark European honeybee uh, population in. Germany and all other countries where uh, the dark European bee is the native bee. So thank you um, for attention. Uh, the questions, uh, we will have a Q&A uh, session uh, after Sarah's talk. So, and uh, I'm uh, finished with my talk and uh, uh, now uh, Sarah, um, you can uh, continue. Yes, uh, hello to everyone. Uh, I, I want just to say a few words because uh, first, um, we hear a lot now and I think you have a lot of questions. And second, uh, my English is not very well, so uh, pardon me for this. Um, as um, it was mentioned, I'm a beekeeper myself since few years. Um, I, I could say I'm, a, I would say a radical beekeeper because I built them um, high levels, three meters that they have a cozy environment and they could look like it, they would be in a tree and I let them the whole honey for the winter time. So of course it's not uh, just possible because it's kind of a hobby and I'm not a professional beekeeper. And normally I'm a chef and yes, I'm a TV chef and now I'm, I'm an MEP since 2019. It means I'm in the European Parliament and there I am in two um, uh, committees. One is agriculture uh, and uh, the other is environment and of course uh, we deal also with bee issues. Um, so topic of the bees is one of my favorites. Um, so if I was asked if I want to be a Petronite, I think this is the, uh, I don't know if the word is very correct. It was a very pleasure for me to, and I was very grateful that I was asked because I really fight about that. I have also with partners, um, organic farm, a huge organic farm in the Uckermark. So there is not a lot of houses here. You can say uh, the, um, I think, in Europe, they say in, in the Ukabas mark, uh, live nobody because there are not a lot of people, but of course they, it's close of Berlin one hour. So when you are here, uh, come and visiting me and my farm. Um, we have also a slaughterhouse and uh, we do uh, old handcraft with sausages like uh, 60 years uh, ago without any artificial nutritions. We have um, also a wooden oven bakery uh, that bakes like 100 years before. So I'm very into handcraft and protection and biodiversity, even when it's in plate or in the nature. And so the topic of the uh, dark bee is very important, but because it is also a question of biodiversity. So I'm very help, uh, grateful that, like I mentioned before, that now I'm a happy owner from one uh, vivid small uh, dark bee uh, hive. And they, they are do, doing quite well. And they, all my beehives are 
uh, not on one place, they are separated because it's better for the bees. Um, so I can really look what's going on. And so now I can tell you it's, uh, it's fun to look them and to have them around me. And what the other side uh, is between uh, scientific and what you want to do and why we have to protect it and why we have to look after them. You have heard a few things and I'm sure you will hear more. And if I can support you on an European level or German level or whatever, I'm there next to you and hope to fight for you for the right things. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Sarah and uh, Stefan. Um, in the meantime, some questions uh, came in. So, um, Stefan, uh, I'll go uh, through them uh, uh, with you. Um, the first one is saying, and uh, my screen just froze. Can I quickly? Ah, there it is. Uh, sorry, Dylan. Stefan, could you stop sharing your screen? So, okay, yes, yes. It's so. a little bigger. And thank you so much, Sarah. I was very, it's very exciting. So, we're very excited to getting to know you a little better. So did I uh, stop it now? Or, or? No, it's still running. Uh, no. So which uh, oh. button I have to click? Uh, you should at, at the top say stop sharing screen. So a kleiner Balken oben. Stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. And Dylan, yeah, you're there. Perfect. So uh, the first question which, uh, which came in was... Um, uh, from which countries are you fetching uh, queens uh, to build up your, uh, uh, let's say, your population in Germany? Yes, uh, mostly from um, Scandinavian uh, sources, but we also have, um, uh, um, uh, especially uh, uh, most important were Swedish sources. Uh, at a, I would say at the second place, um, Norwegian. Then we recently got uh, good uh, Russian material and um, uh, perhaps uh, something else. Uh, of course, um, um, there was also some, some imports from uh, uh, um, Poland, Austria, and a lot is, is, was done, but um, uh, um, I also do not have a precise uh, information what every other uh, um, breeders do and have, uh, but uh, one can say that uh, the, the uh, vast majority of, of uh, bees uh, we currently have are of Scandinavian origin. Yeah, so the breeders are free to decide from where they get queens to test. Yes. Yeah, okay, well, thank you very much. Um, some questions which are uh, related to that. Um, Matthijs Hermans uh, asks, merging different origins, um, because you said that you would bring um, that you would bring in queens from different places and then test where they do well uh, and would merge them. So he asks, um, merging different origins might lead to hybrid figure. So that means that the next generation, so the generation um, after that hybrid generation, uh, might perform bad. Um, so how do you take that into account, he asks. Um, at least from my uh, very own uh, experience, I uh, did not make such uh, experience. Uh, yes, we, we know this problem uh, from hybrid breeds of, of uh, carniolin bees with everything else and, and uh, Italian bees. Uh, but um, in case uh, we uh, face uh, problems with um, um, aggressive uh, uh, hybrids, then it's also on the, uh, the decision on the breeder uh, whether to uh, continue working with them or not, because uh, no breeder will uh, sell uh, such bees uh, to anybody else, or at least uh, not selling without uh, informing or, 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 or uh, to, uh, inform the customer. Uh, that there might be some some problems, uh, and and it's, yeah. it wouldn't be be sold to to uh, uh, people who um, are not uh, experienced uh, with with um, um, 
black bees. So it's you no, know, it's important because, um, or it might be important because um, hybrid uh, vigor can appear in one generation and disappear in the next. So it, it might be um, a good idea to continue with such bees under the supervisions of an experienced breeder who will not do stupid things with them. <laughs> that's, a, that's a that's a good one. Um, no, because I think that it, it he refers probably to uh, if you if you combine well if you mix or or hybrid well if you combine two different uh, mellifera origins, mm. then the outcome of that one might have a hybrid effect. Um, the same one if you would combine two different subspecies, uh, and then sometimes they get uh, nasty. But like you say, if you um, well, if you chank them and you throw out the aggressive ones, then um, well, you. I, I have never problem. seen this hybrid effect uh, between different origins of mellifera, but of course it might be that it will happen somewhere, somewhere. Yeah. So what I told you yeah. is what we would do when it would appear. So it's um, uh, two times. Um, yeah, you know, <laughs> would. Two times yeah. good. Thank you. Um, I uh, have a question from uh, Harman van der Ende. Um, <laughs> well, it's a question which relates to all of us in every country. Um, he asks, how is your relation with the Karnica and Buckfast beekeepers? I think um, Johannes should uh, answer this question uh, because he has more um, personal contact. Okay. Uh, Johannes, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's very different. Uh, you have beekeepers which are very tolerant uh, and also beekeepers which are not. So uh, the problem is not uh, the race, uh, not uh, bugfast, uh, not the subspecies uh, carnica. Uh, the problem are the people and we have to try to do, uh, give information about uh, dark bee and to teach the people which is the dark bee and then we uh, um, can deal with them. So uh, that's the problem. Uh, not the bees are the problem, the people are. And uh, yes. we have most people, uh, they want to speak with us and learn about dark bee. Uh, the interest is good. But you have also people you can't uh, teach um, there. You have to accept that is not good for them. Yeah, they just have their opinion and they will never change. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I guess we, I guess we know that kind of beekeepers in every country, unfortunately. I would oh, say thank yes. you. Um, Alice Pinto, uh, well, she wants to congratulate you for uh, the amazing, uh, important work that you do. Um, but she asks, so in your presentation, you mentioned uh, that you would also use genetic markers uh, to check for how pure the mellifera bees are that you use. Uh, she asks um, what kind of molecular markers you are using or you will be using. Um, and also, how do you see the future of the dark bee in Germany? Mm -hmm. For the, the first uh, question, um, it's um, under development now. So there is no um, final decision made uh, which markers we will use. Um, uh, at least uh, probably know that there is a lot of um, scientific um, discussion around this uh, issue and we um, uh, try to, to stay informed about this and um, um, we have uh, currently no uh, definitions in our um, draft of breeding rules um, but of course we know uh, we, we have to make a decision someone uh, um, but um, currently um, yeah we cannot so the um, uh, the answer could be uh, the, the, yeah. the second yeah. We, yeah. we, we talk to Dylan and uh, find a good way. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. um, well, that's well, that's uh, that's an answer too. Um, she also asks whether you have already tried queens from Ireland. 
uh, specifically in northern Germany, close yeah, to the, not, uh, the Ostsee. Not not me uh, personally, but I uh, uh, some somebody has perhaps uh, Johannes. You can say something more in detail um, um, about uh, uh, them. And uh, yeah, um, Johannes, perhaps yeah. Uh, what about the Irish queens? Uh, yes, um, but I have no results uh, about this bees in Germany uh, now yet at the time. But I have uh, two virgin queens uh, got this year and uh, inseminate them with Swedish drones. And so uh, I would like to test them now in this combi. Um, I know some people, I think one, two, three, uh, not more, uh, who have pure Irish bees in Germany, um, but I don't know any results uh, at the time. I hope in spring we have resume and then we have answers of these questions. Mm. So that's it something is for us to look forward to. It is indeed uh, uh, difficult uh, uh, to get Irish queens. Yeah, it's, there, there were some uh, attempts, but um, also uh, uh, I attempted uh, uh, um, to, to import queens from a um, quite famous uh, um, uh, Irish beekeeper who, who runs a, a website. Um, uh, and uh, uh, it failed. Uh, they, they told uh, uh, me that they do not um, uh, send to Germany and that everything was over so, so it's really hard and um to get some uh, mm. unfortunately i heard that we... well there are some Sorry, there are some uh, <laughs> there are some hard regulations on exporting queens mm. um and also what you what you cannot forget i mean i've lived here for four years now um the weather here is insanely bad mm. uh, even in spring and summer it's just incredibly bad weather overall um i mean i know what beekeeping is like on the continent that's it's easy shit compared to what you have here it's i mean i have so much respect for beekeepers in the british isles uh because it's really it's really hard to rear queens amazingly mm. yeah we heard Eva's talk from nibs and uh, she said yeah it's just not enough queens they can breed to okay. cover all mm. It's like in Switzerland, the demand, the demand in inland is far too high that people are able to sell queens abroad. Mm. I also heard about uh, Irish beekeepers who stopped uh, bee business because of the bad weather and the, the uh, um, yeah the, for the for better economy of, of a um, bee yard in, in Ireland. It's really hard uh, to to earn money with beekeeping. I would like to point out another question that has been partly answered by the Jan Gutzeit and was not visible anymore by Maggie Fregard. Uh, did you see that, Dylan? Oh, no, it disappeared. Where was it? Yeah. Uh, do you want to establish distinct lines of AMM in various regions of Germany or do you want to establish a single German breed? Mm, uh, actually, we... misunderstood a little bit. Yeah, uh, uh, we haven't... Uh thought about it so, so much. I think it's uh, on the responsibility of the uh, beekeepers uh, at their um, uh, uh, particular location, uh, uh, which uh, bee uh, uh, fits best there and uh, which they uh, select. So um, we, we do not, actually we do not like the idea of this one German bee breed uh, because uh, it actually it's the same, well, uh, most probably uh, would result in the same mistake as a uh, Carniolian um, beekeepers uh, uh, did uh, that they have too uniform, too, too much uniformity in their breads and, and the, the, the chances to adapt to uh, other climates, to, to parasites and mites and uh, uh, whatever uh, will decline uh, uh, by too much uniformity in your bread. And so uh, uh, what, we, what I um, already have explained is that we... Uh, uh, try to keep the uh, genetic variation uh, uh, as high as possible. And uh, actually, uh, although we did not discuss it so far, uh, it, it should result uh, uh, 
in uh, different um, or in different properties of uh, local um, or of, of, of dark bees um, adapted to the uh, local conditions uh, at the uh, site where the bee breeder live. Yeah. So it kind of happens by itself. You don't have a pl an overall plan. Like I think that's the major like, message here. Um, there is not a, a general plan how to do this. Everybody kind of gets bees from and tries and tests and crosses and it will develop by itself. Yes, uh, one time this, and it's a bit difficult. Uh, we don't want um, one conform uh, German uh, dark bee, mm. but uh, we don't also want um, pure lines, breeding lines on several places. So uh, how Stefan told uh, the genetic variation uh, to be big, that's uh, our uh, seal. Goal. 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 And uh, this is um, the different to most other breeding programs. And that's difficult to realize. And uh, we learn year for year. Mm. Thank you. And there I think is it's one, a, one more. a nice journey. Yeah, life journey. There's one more hidden question. Dylan, did you see from Harman as more for Sarah? Vina? A hidden one. So did you put them? Uh, it's a new um, well, I, well, I read that um, it was about how, how we could help her. How uh, can we help you in the parliament to realize the protection of the AMM? I think that's a very good question. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, I think the question has to be, how can I support you? Uh, this, is, this makes a little bit more sense. Of course, we need uh, always, we, we need the politician, the groups, but we need also, if this is not possible, the society to help uh, to, uh, to get an awareness about the dark bee. So we could do a few things together uh, to uh, to take this um, this issue uh, on the topic, um, there was a, now a, a bee pollution week in the parliament, and there will be, I think, also next year. We could do something uh, for the bees, or I could uh, maybe do something uh, with other MEPs or maybe also with the commission. Or you tell me what do you need as a uh, as instruments, maybe also for the law, and they could uh, ask the commission a question, a written question, and they have to answer in, I think, six to 12 weeks. And um, so it's not what you can do for me, it's what you can do, uh, what I can do for you. Um, because the, the, the theme about the dark bee is also for me new. I'm very interesting about bees, also about the title, I don't know in English. So beekeeping in the trees. And um, I'm very well connected with um, Meli Fera e.V. in Baden-Württemberg, the yeah, uh, Demeter uh, Bee Forschungs- und Versuchsanstalt, so science. Um, they do science also with with the bees and um, the the master, the bee beekeep master. There, it's a good friend of mine, and he's coming visiting me often, and we speak about bees. So uh, a lot in my life is about bees, not just everything, because my first focus is on nutrition. Uh, but also, uh, this is very important about honey, you know, what they do with, with fake honey and uh, how they, what they do with bees, uh, also not with the uh, dark bee, but with, with the normal bee. So I'm fighting in very, um, a lot of positions. So it would be uh, a great help if you say, there you have to be aware or there you have to fight or there you have to, uh, we can do that or we need that. Mm -hmm. And then I will uh, read it and then I we can have a discussion or I said, okay, good point. I try, at least I could do this. And uh, then we will see what's going on. That's very good information to have, thank you. We'll be more aware as well. <laughs>
So sorry, my English is not so very, very good. I hope you, you get my points. Your English is, all is very all, good. We're all not <laughs> native speakers here. <laughs> You're a shaman. <laughs> Uh, Stefan, I have another question for you from um, uh, Vincent Duare. Do I pronounce that right? Mm -hmm. um, he, he actually asks, like, um, what kind of protection does the uh, Stumpfwald uh, region has? Uh, you said that the, the, within the Stumpfwald uh, there is a mating place for dark bees and that was protected. Mm -hmm. uh, but is it legal protection? Yes, it's legal and it's um, uh, perhaps. Uh, um, um, Johannes, you can uh, tell something more in detail um, um, before I uh, start with, with uh, any uh, speculations. Um, Johannes, um, welche Behörde ist denn das, die bei uns in Deutschland ist? Das die Landesbehörde? Uh, yes, um, but it's uh, different uh, to all uh, Bundesländer. Uh, not every, uh, also nicht jedes Bundesland hat ein Belegstellengesetz, also diese mm. Gesetze für Belegstellen sind sehr unterschiedlich. Und äh, Stumpfwald ist eine registrierte, ist, ist, Stumpfwald ist uh, registered and uh, well established um, Belegstelle, uh, Matting Area uh, for Dark B. So we can, Vincent, uh, uh, at least I can um, answer the, uh, your question in, in a way that uh, we can say it's not a European uh, uh, protection, but it's a uh, a German and most probably uh, um, um, protection uh, by the federal state of Baden-Württemberg. Rheinland-Pfalz. Ah, Rhein oh, uh, sorry. Rheinland by the, by the um, federal state of Rheinland-Pfalz. So it's, a, it's, a, it's something, it's, uh, you can say it's something like a local authority but actually it doesn't matter uh, for the quality of this um, protection so so it means it is protected and this, this also means that um, a disturbance of this protection uh, uh, with um, other uh, bees uh, 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 is uh, forbidden and uh, uh, one can be uh, 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 punished uh, uh, when when a, a beekeeper uh, brings uh, uh, bees into the um, area of this uh, meeting place. Yeah, yeah. Um, a question from my, uh, from my uh, part. How many drone colonies do you have at this mating station? Uh, uh, about 25, Johannes? What? Uh, yes, uh, mm -hmm. that's okay. <laughs> so, so we, um, uh, as uh, um, repeated all the way, uh, we want uh, great uh, genetic variation. So and that's why we also um, use a lot of uh, drone colonies, uh, which shouldn't be uh, or at little um, genetic re uh, related as possible. So we want a, a great a variety of genetic material on the drone side. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, well, this is a question which, well, which only German people might be able to uh, to answer. Um, it's uh, from John Durkas, and he asks, how is, how is it that important German bee scientists supported the removal of dark bees uh, in the past? And do they uh, now, well, do the current ones regret that maybe? Some of them uh, regret it a bit, I think, yes, but not all. Um, and um, I think, um, at the time uh, when they uh, decided uh, to um, switch to uh, carniolian bees, uh, 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 economic reasons were very much important for such decisions than today. So the, the idea of uh, uh, bio, uh, the diversity and that this uh, biodiversity is a good which should be protected um, was not uh, in the minds in uh, uh, after the, the Second World War or, or in, in 1960. They also had, uh, uh, um, yes, economy in their minds. And um, um, at this time, uh, the uh, Carniolian bee was uh, much more developed than, than any um, mellifera strain. And so it was, I think, quite easy for, for, for the uh, officials uh, of the beekeeper associations to say, okay, we switch to Carniolin, uh, it uh, uh, 
brings more revenues. And yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's a good reason. I mean, we all know that in the past, I mean, nowadays beekeeping is more like a hobby for most of us. Uh, but back then, bees were kept for, well, oh, for honey and beeswax. And if you then don't mm -hmm. have prolific colonies, then, well, mm -hmm. of course, it's, it's today, interesting to replace them. They are. Supermarkets are, are full today, also full of honey. Uh, but at the, at the uh, end of the uh, Second World War and the, the decades uh, afterwards, it wasn't. Yeah, and and so um, the the um, maximum uh, production everywhere also uh, uh, of honey was was uh, a big trigger. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, before uh, Jan uh, tell us something, I would like to say something about history uh, to this point. In 1934, uh, the state um, we are quite sure um, was the goal of increasing the yield from 10 kilo to 12.5 kilo of honey per colony and per year. And um, then they uh, made experience uh, with dark bee and with Arcanica and other bees. And uh, the result of this was uh, that Arcanica might be uh, better to reach this uh, increase. And this, that was uh, just the death uh, of dark bee in Germany. In Germany. Um, these uh, 2.5 uh, kilo uh, honey per year. And um, yes, it's uh, quite back in history, but uh, now we... Um, have the luck that uh, the DIB, uh, Deutscher Imkerbund, uh, the president uh, talks to us and uh, he has interest in dark B and we can talk with him quite good. And uh, so I think it would be better in uh, the future. Well, that's very important. Uh, keep that keep that line open. Uh, I would say. Um, I, I have another Jan, question from. Sorry, I think Jan. Was, so Jan Gutzeit, sorry, Dylan. Jan Gutzeit, who's the chair of the um, Bundesverband, is here just in audio because he's actually sick uh, at home. But I figured he might want to add something, and there he is. So Jan, please. Welcome. Thank you, Gabriel. Good evening to all. Um, and sorry, my English is very bad. I will uh, talk to you in German. I hope uh, you can understand and uh, other, other can uh, translate for you. We will translate for you. Okay. Thank you. We will you. translate, that's fine. Um, wenn ich die Frage richtig verstanden habe, dann war auch danach gefragt, um, wie sich das heute verändert hat, die Einstellung uh, zu dem damaligen Fehler um, der Ausrottung der dunklen Biene. Und das, was Johannes jetzt angesprochen hat, ist tatsächlich ein sehr ähm, wichtiger Vorgang, dass also die verschiedenen Verbände in Deutschland miteinander ins Gespräch kommen. Das passiert vor allen Dingen mit dem größten Imkerverband, dem Deutschen Imkerbund, als auch mit den Backfastimkern auf ähm, Bundesebene. Und wir haben inzwischen erreicht, dass also unser Verband die Größe erreicht hat an Mitgliedern, dass wir dort als Gesprächspartner angenommen werden und wir haben sehr lange wirklich sehr kritische Beziehungen zum Deutschen Imkerbund gehabt, weil ich den persönlich tatsächlich für die Ausrottung der dunklen Biene verantwortlich gemacht habe. Und die Aussage, die aber dessen Präsident getätigt hat, nämlich dass die dunkle Biene in jedem Fall erhaltenswert ist, die war für mich die entscheidende Wiedergutmachung und die Trendwende äh, dahingehend, dass wir jetzt gemeinsam an diesem Ziel arbeiten. Das wird praktisch zur Folge haben, dass wir ausgediente Belegstellen von denen angeboten bekommen und damit unsere Zuchtarbeit äh, verbessert wird. Und außerdem wird es wahrscheinlich die angespannte Lage unter den verschiedenen Imkern der verschiedenen Bienenunterarten entspannen, wenn die Vorstände der Verbände gemeinsame Sache machen und dies dann demonstrieren. Okay. Uh, we might not remember the whole string, but we will 
you know, wrap it up a little bit. Okay, I try. Dylan, you check when I miss something. Okay. So yeah, yeah well, that's good. <laughs> Jan said that um, they have gained a certain, you know, size and publicity so that the associations, the other associations like Harnica and Backfast, but also the overall association like they, they started to talk to them, which is a very, very important process. And they just became uh, like, you know, an, an important association. And uh, this helps a lot. They get offered now uh, mating stations. Did I understand that right? Yes. And what else, Dylan? Um, well, they just said like, um, so they, they, got, they reached the size of an association uh, to which they were considered by the other associations to be like worthy to join the table, mm -hmm. let's say. Um, and they also have the impression that by the fact that they are now in conversation with the other associations and with the other presidents of the Buckfast uh, Association, the Karnica Association, um, that by doing that, it seems like the tensions which are there between local beekeepers, uh, that they kindly, let's say, um, they, um, they, how is it, unfreeze? Mm -hmm. uh, like they slightly disappear. Uh, well, you will have exceptions everywhere uh, and always, um, but it seems like they say that by by making clear to everyone that the associations are talking to one another, that also on the local level, uh, tensions between beekeepers are are less high. So I think that's uh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, let me add this. Uh, unfortunately, there are also some hotliners um, which. Um, <laughs> Uh, try to disturb this this uh, process of uh, yeah um, reduction of tensions as as uh, Dylan said, um, but um, yes we all hope that um, these um, hardliners will um, or that their influence on the discussion will um, drop uh, over over the next years um, uh, when we uh, are raising uh, uh, even more also with the, the numbers of uh, members in uh, uh, our association, but um, also with our uh, presence in the, in the public. Yeah? Sarah helps us uh, there uh, very much. And um, then we hopefully we will win more influence on this uh, discussion uh, all over Germany and, and uh, in the, uh, uh, amongst the German beekeepers. Yeah, um, something very interesting. Um, though, oh, uh, I, I don't. Well, I don't know whether you have an answer to it, but it's an interesting, remarking question from Berthold Heinze. Um, let's say that. Well, shortly, what hounds him? Like a question which hounds him. Um, so, so many years ago, the local German bees were replaced. Uh, by imports from well, other countries, mainly Austria, Slovenia, maybe. Um, but the replacement probably wasn't done completely. Um, so you would also have colonies with maybe F1 generations, drones, which would still uh, bring on their mellifera genes into the local population with imported queens. So he asks, like, just like we have like still a percentage of uh, Neanderthal genes uh, within our genome, uh, would there still be mellifera genes within the, let's say, general German Carniolan breed? I don't yes. know whether you have uh, whether you have some ideas about that. Yes, yes, I think so. Because um, um, uh, the the appearance of or, or, or what we actually um, Distinguish is um, this, uh, yes, uh, official strains, uh, but not every uh, beekeeper buys always queens from this uh, official strains. And there also is um, so called land bean uh, still existing. This is a bee which is uh, or was in the past uh, uh, mainly a, a carniolian bee, but um, um, it was also uh, uh, visibly a bit uh, distinguishable from. from uh, uh, Purebred um, uh, carniolin bee, and and this is also what we 
or, or, or with the, the bees which I got first when I start beekeeping in uh, um, 1998 uh, was this what I called um, uh, uh, GDR bee or <laughs> some, something like this. Yeah, this um, was not a bread. It was a, 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 a bee which came from not so well managed uh, a, a bee. Uh, uh, Apiaries and um, uh, what uh, most uh, uh, hobbyist beekeepers uh, in my area had, and, and this bee is uh, uh, has surely some remaining um, genetic uh, material of the of the um, dark European bee in, uh, but. Um, uh, I, I also uh, tried uh, at this time. This was at the end of the nine. Uh, 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 of the 1990s um, tried uh, to, to select uh, uh, something like um, dark bee from it and I failed. And uh, I think it is not possible to, uh, uh, perhaps this is the, the actual aim of this question. I, I think it's not possible to re-establish um, uh, pure uh, mellifera bee from this um, hybrids uh, because um, uh, the, the, the um, most important reason might be that um, we actually have no clue uh, which, um, um, or, or perhaps to say not no clue, but little clue, um, which um, genetic uh, 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 <coughs> variants are typically for um, mellifera and which one for carniolin B. So, uh, so the, uh, and, and they merged everywhere on every chromosome. You, you, you know that there are also um, this um, uh, intercrossing uh, of um, uh, uh, chromosomes uh, during uh, uh, meiosis. Um, yeah, what is as crossing over or what is the um, yeah. homologic uh, re recombination is uh, called in, in, uh, in, in science. And this means that the, the, uh, the uh, intercrossing um, of, of these uh, uh, origins is actually not to resolve. Yeah, and and uh, this might be a reason why, why there is no chance to get uh, poor bread uh, 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 millifera back from these hybrids. Of course, you can select for, for wing vanation, yeah, and then you can enforce that you get a bee uh, which has uh, um, desirable uh, um, um, Kubital indexes or handle indexes or, or, or uh, what else, uh, but uh, it does not mean that you have uh, a appropriate mellifera in your hand. Yeah, that it might just look like a mellifera bee. Yes. Yeah. Um, I get uh, another question from Vincent uh, concerning this uh, Stumfwald uh, mating station. Um, as I understand, it's like, I mean, maybe what we call but um, a Bundesland, like a province or a, or a region within a country, so it's it's uh, regulated by local rules. Um, so for uh, this Bundesland, um, are there rules on, let's say, fines which beekeepers need to pay if they put their hives inside that area and their hives are not mellifera bees? So if someone put, if someone would put carniolum bees in there, do they have to pay a fine? Who is checking whether beekeepers? Put hives in there. Is that the police? Well, is that the, um, the police? So the police. Uh, is it beekeepers themselves who need to? Well, is it you who need to go around and check whether there are foreign uh, hives in the area? Johannes, can you answer this? I have no clue. Uh, no, it's uh, too different uh, in every Bundesland. But so, uh, uh, Vincent, uh, Vincent, perhaps you can. Uh, um, can you tell us why you are so so much interested in in these uh, details? Um, um, perhaps we can find any other solution. Um, I'm I'm uh, just wonder uh, why why you uh, uh, um, are, yes are, are you so so in uh, this this uh, uh, questions about this fines and and police and so. Uh, uh, I think it might can, be because we he's looking for it. some inspiration. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Vincent is uh, active in, in France uh, with FedCan, and they're also, you know, fighting. Oh, because in France we have only local protection and uh, fines. Uh, yeah. hmm. Thirty-five okay. euros—that's yeah. nothing. 
There's nothing. Oh, okay. They have a hard, very hard time establishing protection areas. They have this conservatoire, and you know it's very hard. And that's um, that's probably why he was interested, and in nobody's okay. controlling. Mm. You know, you can mm. have a, a conservation Excuse area, me. but you need to, you know, manage it. Yes, Mrs. It's, a, it's a good issue, and and thank you, Vincent, for this questions. Every Actually, excuse I, me, excuse uh, me. No. I, I just wanted to say bye bye because I have another appointment with my faction and I have to switch now to the yeah. other conference. Mm. So I wish you all the best. I hope to hear from you. I'm sure I'm in contact with all the uh, German Dark D fighters, uh, with uh, Jan and Stefan and Johannes. So they will uh, tell me what's going on. And if you need me and if you can support you, let's go. Let's fight. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure pleasure to have you here. And bye. I just wanted to say, Dylan, you have a very nice, smooth voice. I'm, I love to hear <laughs> very good. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Vincent, we will uh, pick up this issue. It's, it's also interesting for us. And um, um, then perhaps we can uh, come up to you some one, but uh, it's also really interesting for us. Uh, if the fine is too low, then of course uh, that's no that there is no no li uh, uh, limit, uh, and, and um, uh, everybody can can come in in this area uh, only to uh, yeah to to annoy uh, the the uh, breeders uh, only yeah. for fun. Yeah, this is uh, it's a fun for 35 you. Yeah, it's a, a, a club evening. <laughs> and it's it's a question whether. Do you only get fined, but you mm. can stay, or are you enforced? You know, is law law enforced? Mm. But uh, Dylan, um, Sarah had already to go. It's twenty oh six. I think we have to wrap this up with one more question from Lassie. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's also the last one uh, left to uh, to pose. So um, from Lassie Kauko. Um, he asks, "What's the situation with the uh, the gene bank storing?" Uh, with the um, the frozen sperm. Now, I think he's referring to the project of uh, Hohen Neuendorf. Um, I don't know whether you are uh, well participating in that uh, in that project. Mm, not me. No, so I th yeah, I mean maybe Lassie can correct, but I think he's he's asking about um, a project of the B Institute in Hohen Neuendorf. Yeah, we, are, know, uh, we know that there, there is uh, something on the way and uh, we also have uh, uh, one colleague or at least one colleague who uh, uh, collaborates uh, in this project but uh, he is not uh, at least to my knowledge not here and I cannot answer or say something about this so so sorry uh, um, we cannot answer okay well maybe that's something we can ask Marina uh, yeah. next week or the week after I guess Okay. okay well all questions um well have uh, have gotten an answer well done thank you very much thank you okay. so we will wrap this up and please the hosts and speakers stay on for a while to shut down your your audio and video and we give um the audience five minutes to exit okay <laughs> So I want to invite you to the next conference next week, which will be by Rachel Ward on the proteomic comparison of winter and summer honeybees. Okay, and I hope to see you all back there. Thank you.